Thank you for joining us at Nikki Dare Radio, heard worldwide by millions of listeners, with your lovely host, Ms. Nikki Dare. Our podcast, hosted by Nikki Dare, is your home for education to safety and survival, leadership and inspiration. Nikki Dare is the founder of I Dare Inc., a registered 501c3, with its mission to educate and mobilize resources for preparedness and sustainability. Sustainability. IDARE is a grassroots credo and personal mission based on its pillars of excellence integrity, diversity, adaptation, resilience, and empowerment. Ms. Dare's personal mission is to help you encounter your purpose by unlocking your inherent potential and finding joy in the journey. Women's advocate, transformational mentor, and a seasoned BPR change management consultant since her early 20s in transforming companies and decades later she is reinventing her purpose and now here's your lovely host Ms. Nikki Dare Hey hola aloha buenos dias buenas tardes guys como tal vous selamat pagi selamat siang semua all right, welcome, welcome to Leadership 365 with Nikki Dare, your host. Leadership 365, Sustainability, a podcast for those who aspire to be a sustainable leader. And it is designed to inspire growth and impact for sustainability. So you can create your best year of 365 days ever. It is a premier podcast focused on leadership development and safety and preparedness education, transformational growth and personal development for both business and individuals. Our podcast, it is designed to inspire sustainable leadership and create positive, positive impact for a better tomorrow. That's what we're all about. That's what I'm all about. So join us uh, at podcast.nikidare.com to tune in to all of these things. If you have missed before podcasts, go right ahead and visit that website and start creating your best year of 365 days ever, ever. All right, guys, I'm back. I am your host, Nikki Dare. Good to be here with you all. And today we'll be discussing how to build a strong future amidst all this economic and environmental uncertainty. My goodness, crazy world we live in today. Exciting, but also concerning, right? Very, very, uh, very exciting times that uh, currently and also ahead. So please, if you are available, just hang out for the next half an hour or so. Uh, 30 minutes or so, we might learn new things together. And this is exactly how I like it to be, you know, when we discuss things and, you know, we we find things, new things, and we can digest it together and analyze it. And uh, perhaps you find some solution. That's what we're all about here. Welcome to this episode of Leadership Podcast here, uh, where we'll be discussing leadership in a chaotic world. You know, I spend so much time um, as you already know, if you're listening to been listening to my podcast journey here, that I see and preparedness and crisis and things like that, I, I think you know we cannot dismiss those things, right? We cannot just um, say that it will never happen and and things like this to us, to the world, to our business, to yourself. You know, uh, we must eradicate those kind of things in our mind, right? And how we can protect not not being paranoid. But um, always, always trying to to be proactive and outsmart these things, right? And how can we take control of what we can, which is our world? Um, with the current state of the world currently here, including bank collapses, oh my goodness, and natural disasters still ongoing, Mother Nature's whims, you guys. It can be challenging to lead effectively. This is a whole lot of conversations, obviously, you know, that's why I try to take some small bites and for us to digest and look into it and get some perspectives and then see if it, <laughs> it can be overwhelming, I must say, overwhelming to say the least, right? And uh, we can we can find some solutions as we're digesting this, right? 
And I want to thank you guys if you are listening, wherever you are driving, be careful, stay, stay safe when you're driving, listening to this voice. I really appreciate you. Uh, if you are in your comfort, in your, in your uh, home right now, you know, very, very, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining with us here. And uh, I think I probably did, but yeah, this is grand. I'm trying some new things here. But we, we will cover, um, you know, some of this thing as much as we can with my thoughts, actives into the topic. We are definitely witnessing, we're definitely witnessing this, uh, let me turn it down a little bit here. It's raining in LA, so ironic <laughs> to say the least. When you are working office in your home, get any better than this, you know, when you have your bed uh, with your hot beverages, your favorite beverages, I get shit done at work in your home uh, office. And it's just so peaceful and staying focused. All right, derailing from what we're talking about, but we will um, cover as much as we can with my thoughts and my perspective here, you guys. It's all about you know, um, trying to find solutions here. We are witnessing just how even the steadiest and stable industry can fail in just this month in March and last month as well. But this is, I think, you know, personally, it's, it's, it's the beginning of a great summit and will derail to many, many more to come. And I think, you know, must, um, you must find solutions uh, as leaders, as business owners to, um, you know, to combat, um, what's ahead of us and try to, you know, not just for the year, but also for the next, you know, year, two years, three years, five years ahead. So, however, effective leadership is more important than ever in times of challenges and crisis right, right now. Uh, here's a quote. I, I want to share with you a quote that I just made up before I uh, went on to this podcast. I uh, want to scribble down and <laughs> that's really resonating with the topic that we're talking about. In times of chaos, true leaders emerge, those who are willing to adapt, innovate, and inspire their team to navigate through the storm and emerge stronger than ever before. I'm going to repeat that. In times of chaos, I scribbled this down before I, <laughs> before I started this podcast. And I thought I want to share it with you guys. In times of chaos, true, true, true leaders emerge. Those who are willing to adapt, notice the word adapt, innovate, and inspire their team of people to navigate through the storm and emerge stronger than ever before. With so much going on in the world around us, you know, guys, uh, let's dive in. Resilient leadership, building a strong, strong future amidst economic and environmental uncertainties. You know, we, we, we've been on our seats on our edge uh, for the last three years, I must say, right? And this is March 2023, so exactly three years anniversary where we were not giving an option in our world. And you know, just in our world globally, you know, global disruption, shutdown, everything like this. And here we go. Here's your circumstances right now, humans. <laughs> the world, planet Earth, you deal with it. So we have dealt with it for the last three three years, guys. You know, where we explore, I want to I want to talk about this. Uh, where we're gonna explore a world filled with economic um, and environmental uh, uncertainties and turbulences that we have faced. It's not like the first, you know, last three years is the first time that we have experienced this kind of thing, right? Uh, I don't know what age group you are in, you know, generation, whatever, uh, boomer, uh, all of this, right? We have experienced the, uh, I'm in the, in, the, in the crossroad of boom, generation, <laughs> bo boomer, and the next one, I don't know what that is, X, I think. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, you know, we've experienced a crisis before, multiple of them, you know, not just the uh, economic uh, but environmental swell passers. But, um, you know, we take those those experiences under our belt and then we, we must know how to, you know, use that as a, as a learning lessons, right? Not failures, 
learning lessons, basically. It's like, okay, we put that in the mix and then we try to improve ourselves in the continuously. How do, how to modify and pivot rather quickly and thrive, continue to thrive. And that's what we're talking about. I don't want to be an echo chamber here, but that's, that's what I'm really, really, uh, in my DNA and passionate about talking since my very first, uh, consulting business in my early, uh, 20s back in the 80s and early 90s. So I, I've seen quite a few. And then I've read, um, you know, quite a, of course, a lot of them, uh, you know, obviously I wasn't here in World War One, <laughs> uh, Second World War. Um, now we're talking about now global shutdown in the last three years. But yeah, uh, exploring the concept of leadership in the world, um, you know, filled with this uh, environmental uncertainty and economic uncertainty. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the importance of this resilience and how it can help leaders such as ourselves navigate through this chaos. Uh, defining resilience, resilience is really the ability to adapt and bounce back in the face of adversity. Uh, leaders must be resilient, resilient and able to withstand any storms, basically, um, uh, withstand the challenges that come with running, you know, running a business in a chaotic world. You know, that's a macro. Micro would be employees' challenges and and, you know, uh, vendors and things like that, right, when you're looking into. But on the macro, it's a chaotic world, right? They must be willing to take risks. You know, we must be willing to take risks and make difficult decisions. Sometimes that's how we find growth, the opportunities within those challenges and then risk-taking uh, while keeping our team focused and motivated. And, and that's a juggling act, right? And that, that, that's a beauty art of being a leader, uh, with, with a team uh, that is so dynamic and then maintaining their focus and motivation. The importance of innovation. Innovation is key to building resilience and leaders must be willing to try new things and be open to change. Uh, and, you know, we must encourage our team to think outside the box. Sometimes they create your own box <laughs> and come up with creative solutions to any problems given. Uh, innovation helps organization businesses stay ahead and, you know, stay ahead of the curve and be able just to adapt. I love using the word adapt because it is more powerful than survive because adapt is really, really deep, right? Adapt to the ever-changing business landscape. Uh, you can, there is Charles Darwin's quote also, it's not really the strongest or the toughest or the most intelligent uh, humans that will survive is actually the ones who you know, who, who, who are willing to adapt. And that, that's basically, I don't know the exact word per, verbatim, but that is just resonate with me very, very, um, very strong when it comes to overcoming some challenges and crisis. And I have to think about that all the time. You know, he's like, yeah, you got knocked down. All right, get back up again. <laughs> you know, you got to have to be able to adapt and then be able to use that um, challenges and that, that crisis, that, that curve, curve balls that you just got that uh, setbacks in life are uh, unprecedented and sometimes it's not invited, right? <laughs> Just use that as a life, life learning lessons and, uh, you know, how can we bounce back up again from any setbacks? So um, fostering a culture of resilience is really a skill for any leaders. Building a culture of resilience is critical to the success of your business, of any organization. Um, you know, leaders must create an environment, conducive environment where, you know, our employees feel empowered to take ownership of their work and are encouraged to calculate risk as well. You know, we want to give the, you know, the employees a chance, opportunity to also be involved and be participating, be part of that making solutions and decision making, uh, taking the ownership you know, I mean, I, I remember whenever my dad, um, you know, I'm going to take you back to how, you know, we, we as, as a family unit also almost like an, a business nation, basically, right? A unit, family unit. You know, you've got the leader, dad, mom, and you're basically, when you're, you know, still under the same roof, I mean, you know, you go to school and all of these things, so you go by their rules, basically, do you? <laughs> um, so... You know, whenever I remember, whenever my dad always like, uh, okay, we're going to be taking a trip, for example. 
I mean, he's not going to be telling us where to go, what to do. Uh, you know, he, 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 he sat down with us and then asked all of us, that, hey, what is the best place for you guys want to go in the spring? You know, let's just it's a spring break or summer break. Uh, he'll ask around the table for all of us. Of course, we all have, you know, different opinions, right? The girls, we, we all, my two other sisters, so three girls total and a brother and one, one guy. So, of course, we all have different, you know, somewhat dynamics, right? Um, and then we collectively making a decision together. And then, you know, all of the details and everything, logistics and how it's going to pan out. So my, just giving you an example, my, my you know, my, my uh, input on this um, is just that, you know, you've got to have to include your employees to feel empowered to take that ownership of the work and encourage them to take calculated risks as well, right? Some of decision making. Would, would have some kind of risk, calculated risk, right? We're not just going to say, okay, we're going to jump off the cliff together. We can't do that. It's like, okay, uh, it's may be a challenging for all of us, but we're going to have uh, the proper equipment, emergency equipment together. That we're going to, you know, gear you guys up. It happens, right? Those are calculated risks, you know, whether it's not uh, generating revenue and things like that or just physically or financially. Right, so you get my point. Um, yeah, they, they also provide support. Right? All of us have to provide support, resources to help our team overcome obstacles and bounce back from setbacks. You know, some of these things that I talk in my podcast too, I'm, I'm just segue right now, that, you know, we, we, we must continue, continue to provide, whether they're still in-house, employed by us, or even when they get laid off, it, it is our responsibility for the longevity or the well-being or that, you know, Hey, we still we still have that responsibility as leaders, right, of the company or the organization to take care of them, basically, because after all, they work for us Monday to Friday, right? They spend two thirds of their lives at our office for our business, you know, to generating uh, with common goals, you know, vision, mission, all of these things to your mission, vision of the company. So collectively, uh, the next thing that I wanna I wanna insert in this uh, is communicating effectively. <laughs> Do I need that? Effective communication is very critical and very essential to building, you know, or critical to the success of any organization and also building a, a powerful teamwork uh, that, that you can trust together, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a building a culture, cult, uh, culture of resilience, basically. Leaders um, must be transparent and we must be honest with our team. Uh, providing regular updates um, on the any organization progress and addressing any concerns. You know, I have a nonprofit, and you know, a lot. Of, you know, when volunteers sign up, volunteers go through the uh, the process of being recruited and everything. You know, we would we would welcome them. We'd have a briefing, which is you know, uh, vet them basically. Uh, there's so many steps, right? That we we, we do in the back end. And the first thing that I would do when I view them at the very end um, of the process of the interview and the vetting, I, you know, I introduce myself. I, you know, it's like, okay, everybody's a team here. And the, the very one thing, the first thing that I would say, we have an open door policy, meaning that you can directly ask me using my, using my phone, basically. You know, they have access to my uh, text message. They have access to my email. Uh, you know, of course, my assistant Susan can can you know are the one ultimately responsible for uh, replying back to all of these emails in the nonprofit that I have. I dare, but um, I I encourage them to if they have any any concerns or any problems and issues, they most welcome. I encourage them to come to me directly, so I can find solution for them. You know. Uh, how we can accommodate all of these things uh, for the employees or volunteers, rather. So there's no uh, there's no complex process, complicated process that I want to provide to any volunteers, any employees uh, in my organization, because that's the last thing that I that we all should be concerned about. It's like how to talk to them, how to get in touch with them. It's so silly, you know. If they have a problem, uh, they have an issue they want to address. Yeah, by all means, directly ask to me. I, I'm all here. Open policy, open door policy. And 
it's give me about 48. I mean, I'm all, always asking 72 hours latest maximum, 72 hours to get back to them. You know, um, I think that's only fair. 48 hours normally with a 24 hours window. Usually I, I reply back. Uh, 72 hours is like very rare unless I'm traveling or something like that. But communicating effectively is, is very essential in building that culture of resilience and also building that trust, right? Um, also listen actively to feedback ideas uh, from their team, encouraging, uh, from, from our team, sorry, encouraging open dialogue and collaboration. This is so important for me personally as a leader. I mean, I've, I've done, oh my God, I've done uh, entrepreneurship since I was in early 20s. Um, and I have a lot of love that, that journey because I, as you already know, I mean, you know, when you're in your early 20s and then you most likely be, be part of, uh, most likely be part of a team that's probably a, an older age group, right? And then they perhaps, and most likely, they do, ha they do know more than you. <laughs> and, and because they've been there just much, right? Uh, for experiences and everything. And, you know, I listen. I listen. And that's one of the things that I have mastered, I believe. And those of you who are listening listen to my voice and then you know me very well and you have worked together with me, let's say, part of my team, let's say, part of my consulting team to do a project, you know exactly, right? My, I, I, I'd really listen. I'll be the last person to speak. And I'm going to give you an example. I, uh, you know, I've been a president for this uh, professional woman association, right? A chapter president here in my hometown. Uh, members started it. I think it was like 18 members, professional women. Uh, and I was able in, in like a couple of years to increase it to, I don't know, a few hundreds, 500, I think it was. And then I think it was increasing numbers, uh, thousands. Um, the way I did that, you know, well, we have regular meetings and networking meetings, right? Business meetings, social meetings, and things like that, dinners or lunches or breakfasts, right? Um, and then we also have conferences and networking events uh, and, then, and then fairs and community fairs and things like that, right? Or just joining with other community leaders in a local, local town here. But my point is this. Uh, every time when I lead meetings, those meetings that I just mentioned, you know, they would introduce me as a chapter president, blah, blah, so on and so forth. And then, you know, I'll, I'll be speaking. I'll... I'll be like, you know, yeah, today we want to welcome you guys, blah, blah. So it's very short. And I will immediately introduce the guest speakers and whoever that are our guests at the time. And then we'll get, in, we'll get into the topic. We'll get into the discussion. And we'll get into the event, right, the, the, the program. And a lot of times, uh, you know, what I really like to do in those networking meetings is to introduce themselves and then giving them them like um, a couple minutes to introduce themselves, what they do in business, and how can we help, basically. So promote, right? promoting themselves. Um, all, all of those years, uh, I'm always okay. I've led this organization. I've led this uh, networking platform. Almost very rare, I talk about myself, what I do. In fact, none. <laughs> I know those of you who are listening right now and say, yes, yeah, she's quite right. <laughs> At one time, in the meeting, I don't remember what year. Uh, in Mimi's Cafe, I remember it was uh, was it breakfast? It was breakfast, I believe. And somebody came up to me. Uh, it was a guest speaker from LA, uh, woman empowerment. I think it was a business. It was the Chamber of Commerce, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, one of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we were eating breakfast, you know, during one of the one of the uh, after we were not speaking, we we're just networking, socializing. While we're eating, uh, one of the ladies asked me, "Is like exactly what are you?" Yeah, it was kind of like uncomfortable, by the way. <laughs> exactly, what are you do? You? <laughs> and I, I, I said, "Whatever." And before I speak and reply to her question to answer her, one of my board members spoke out. Two of them actually, 
Nena and another lady, I, I don't remember, geez, there's a couple ladies stood up and then said, oh, she did this, she did this, I took her class. Since I took this, <laughs> I think it was just on and on 55 miles per hour, like viral, you know? I mean, these ladies just hand down all of my bio in, in a, in a <laughs> I was like, I'm sitting down, I go, wow, okay, now you know me better than I am myself. <laughs> It was phenomenal. It was epic. I wish you, I wish I can record that. But that happened a couple of times, by the way. I, I just smiled, you know. I, I mean, they respect me, obviously, because they're my board members. Uh, yeah, Nikki, Nikki Dior is very modest, and she wouldn't tell you what she does. <laughs> she would ask you and promote you and your businesses, and she will be the last probably. You would never, you would probably never know what she does. Um after so many years getting to know her. But when you do go to her classes, her workshops is phenomenal. And, you know, she is the real deal. And, you know, she, she will teach you uh, and then take you by your hand and then make sure before you leave that you know everything she uh, had, had, you know, what you came there for. Basically, um, it, it was a grand, grand eye opening for me personally as a leader because it's like, wow. Even my board member, my team members, they would say and speak up for me, right? Because the one who, uh, who questioned, uh, had to question me, was a guest basically from Chamber of Commerce, I believe in LA. Um, I mean, she could just look at my business card and look at me and look me up in a Google on my, um, you know, all of my bio and everything, but she would just want to hear it from me. And <laughs> my board members were just like, because everybody was introducing themselves except me. <laughs> I do that all the time, by the way. I love to listen to their stories. I love to listen to their businesses. I, I you know, I, I'm there for them. I'm there to promote their businesses. That's what the networking is all about. And as a leader, that's what you need to do. I mean, you, you, you need to empower them. You need to spotlight them. You need to, you know, this is your job. This is your job as a leader. You know, it's not about you. It's about them. And that is the, the, the mantra, you know, and, and, and that I'm wearing every time when I have to lead, especially when they're sitting like 30 of them, right? 50, it doesn't matter the count and numbers, the participant number. Um, it, it, it's a really behind all of this. So, guys, I'm just inviting you to lead that way because this world is so interesting right now, exciting yet concerning. We need more leaders who would be out there self and empowering. These really need us to become leaders themselves. And, you know, do this kind of podcast, right? I want to be able to have my own voice as well, right? I, I want I wanna you guys to hear what I have to say as well. Because this is so important. So, so many pro. Um, uh, you know, uh, as a leader, right, president, or whatever role that I'm taking on, um, lead many groups of people. I mean, not just this this professional woman. I've been in Rotary Club, where in how? Oh my gosh, what year was it? 1990? I want to say 1991, two, three, four, five. Rotary Club. Get this, they're all men and they're all French. <laughs> and I was the only female to come to the lunch, no, lunch and networking. I remember this vividly, right? Um, they speak with heavy accent. So I had to kind of like, you know, uh, understand them very clearly. But when it's time for me to speak, then I speak. But there are culture differences as well, right? There's cultural differences, there's uh, language barrier. There is a lot of things that you gotta have to adapt to where you are, right? Um, and, 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 and as a leader, you learn all of these things once when you walk the talk, talk the walk, and also you are blending in with so many different backgrounds, different ethnicity, different cultures, different way of life, different from walks of life, different walks of life. I've traveled, right, from Southeast Asia, uh, Singapore. Uh, Malaysia, Malaysia also, right? And then um, met Australians as well, and we have quite a few Australians in our in our group. 
uh, Mercantile, Mercantile Club as well, is invitations only back then. And there were a lot of diversity there, right? A lot of men, very male dominant. Um, go to the UK, Scotland, uh, the, the European countries as well. That's a different culture as well for me to learn, right? And then back home here, uh, how many, you know, how much is diversity here too as well? So you got to have to master. Now our globe is globalization, I'll call it. you got to have to master your leadership skill to be able to understand people because that's what you are leading, people. You're not leading numbers. You're not leading robots. You're leading people. You're leading with emotions. You're leading with, you got to master that um, emotional intelligence, right? The EI, IQ, AQ, all of this adaptability quotient. I love that word, by the way. I hope that I don't go ta tangent here. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to leave it there on the table, but I just want to invite you guys um, Sorry, it took so long to explain that. I'm kidding effectively. <laughs> but um, yeah, my podcast is with voice. Uh, you guys get to know me. And this is really home for, you know, Nikki Dare to voice uh, her, her voice, <laughs> her perspective, her opinions, her everything, uh, experiences and things like that and journey. So I hope that you guys so far are enjoying this. And let's take a little break here. All right, there we go. I really, really enjoy that, you know, speaking and having podcasts. Um, two decades ago, I never thought that I could speak on a microphone like this and, and be able to reach out to you, um, disseminating information, you know, sharing information, and, you know, hoping that we all can be collectively empowering each other and living our full ability and potential in our lives, uh, whether it is personal development or professional development as a leader, we continue doing this uh, to become our best version. Every we must lead uh, effectively. And this is what it's all about, by the way. So welcome back. Investing the future, investing in the future. Um, leaders ourselves, we must invest in the future to build resilience. There's no options about that. This includes investing in technology, infrastructure, uh, and human capital. How many of you heard that? Human capital. Human capital is so, so important in this. Uh, investing in your employees, investing in yourself, investing in, 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 in your best, best team leaders, right? Meaning that provide them the training, going training, provide them the resources that they need, not you, they need to become their very best because that's your assets. Your employees, your people are your biggest assets in your organization. By investing in their team's development, um, in our in our team's development, you know, we can ensure that our organization has the skills and knowledge and um, talents, talents necessary to succeed in the rapidly changing world. So overall, resilience, that word, I want to spotlight in this podcast is, is really important. It is essential to for leadership in chaotic world. You know, leaders must be willing to adapt, to change, foster a culture of resilience, communicate effectively, and invest in the future. So by doing so, we can build a strong, successful organization that can withstand any storm, any storm and challenges that come with economic environmental uncertainty. I hope that you enjoy a portion of this podcast and I, you know, really want to share all of that with you. Resilience is so important. So, you know, I want to go back to some of the impacts on the recent bank collapses. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, investment advisor, so I've already mentioned that in my last podcast. Although I have a couple of great ones, very knowledgeable and sharp and witty. Uh, if Eric Schaefer is listening, <laughs> I'm talking about you, Eric. Uh, he's a great guy, uh, younger than me, <laughs> but very, very sharp. And, um, you know, obviously he knows 
very much so in his financial space. Um, uh, you know, quick to, I mean, he, he has all of the answers. I, you know, we have our regular meetings, sit down meetings. We never, we never like have, you know, some of the financial always like advisors always like, okay, we can meet virtual. Uh, I, I like to meet hand in hand so I can see the, uh, the body language and all of these things. And just, just the way I am. By the way, um, so I, I always come up with questions before our, our meetings, and he always have a great answers, intelligent, very intelligently and professionally. All right. So the impact of bank collapses, um, this can have a very significant impact on the economy, as we've seen in the past, right? 2008, 2007, 2008, derailed to all the way, right? 2008, so what, 14, 15 years later, 14 years later. Leaders need to be aware of the potential effects of their organizations as well as on their customers and communities. It's very essential to have a contingency plan uh, in place to address any potential disruptions and to maintain the business continuity. Yeah, it's important. The BCP, business continuity plan, um, you know, I'm all for that since I've been in the space and talking about this back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, as a business, um, you know, change management specialist, consultant, it is important to know all of these, uh, you know, systems or things, plans, contingency plans in place that we must have that, both the BCP and B BPR, right? The business community and also the direct, uh, I'm sorry, the disaster uh, uh, preparedness plan. It's essential to have an easy plan in place to address any any potential disruption and maintaining that, you know, supply chain running because that's the goal for this business on any plan. It goes having the adequate cash reserves, diversifying investments, emergency funds, of course, and ensuring that all stakeholders are informed and participating and also engaged. It's so important to let them know what's going on, right? After all, you guys are our team. The impact of bank collapses and the future, on the future of the banking industry depends on how effectively leaders respond to these events, right? Disruptions and all of these things. Uh, I think I'm for it. Yeah, the, the music. Can you guys hear me a little bit better there? So in the past, bank collapses have had a significant impact on the economy as many of us witnessed that, leading to layoffs, right? Massive layoffs, job losses, decreased consumer confidence. Uh, not only that, but also affecting the uh, customer customer service quality. And, and, and you know, that, that that's declining that, right? And other negative impacts. However, by taking a proactive approach and implementing effective contingency plans. Leaders can mitigate the effects of bank collapses and promote greater stability in the industry. Um, having this adequate cash reserves okay, and diversifying investments can help to mitigate the risk associated with bank collapses and effective communication with your stakeholders. Um, help also to maintain the trust and the confidence in the banking system. Additionally, effective leadership can involve this um, collaboration, right? Collaboration with the regulators and our other financial institutions to develop best practices and strategies to prevent any future banks, any potential bank collapse, anything like that in the future. Overall, the impact of bank collapses on the future of the banking industry depends on how effectively leaders respond to these kind of events. So by taking proactive and collabor collaborative approach, leaders get greater stability, resilience, and innovation in the industry and minimizing the negative impacts of bank collapses on the economy and society as a whole. My three cents on all of this it is difficult to predict the exact impact of bank collapses through the banking system industry because it can vary, right? Depending on the severity of the collapse and the response of regulators and 
financial institutions. However, um, I, I just want to give some examples, like hypothetical examples of how bank collapses could impact the industry and how effective leadership can mitigate their, their effects. Uh, again, I'm not a financial investment, uh, but I, I, I know enough from my experiences in the past and, you know, with the current events and, you know, just kind of like, okay, envision like this prohibited trajectory <laughs> may look like, right? So I want to share that with you guys, um, you know, how, how this collapse is going to impact the industry and how, it can, you know, this, this effective leadership can mitigate the effects, increased regulation. So what I mean is this, is if a bank collapse caused by widespread financial misconduct or unethical behavior, it could lead to increased scrutiny and regulation uh, of the banking industry by the government agencies. We, we've seen this already, right? As we're, I'm talking right now, it's already on TV news and everything, right? Breaking news. Effective leadership within banks would involve being transparent with regulators and taking responsibility for any wrongdoing, uh, as well as implementing strong internal controls and risk management practices to prevent similar events in the future. Um, that's within the increased regulation. The economic instability, uh, a major bank collapse could cause tsunami, <laughs> great tsunami, that's all I can say. Ripple effect throughout the economy, leading to this massive layoff and, you know, like, um, <laughs> they're all gone, <laughs> pull under the rug. Decreased consumer confidence and other negative impacts. Uh, we can list them all, right? Uh, if it's affected to us, to our banking, to our money, of course, we get emotionally affected, right? Effective leadership would involve working with government officials and industry stakeholders to develop and deploy, implement measures to stabilize stabilize the economy, such as providing emergency funding or stimulus packages, which uh, in fact, it's already been done right now, right? As we're speaking today. So next is innovation and adaptation. I want to insert this kind of thought. In response to the challenges posed by the bank collapses, effective leadership within the banking industry could lead to increased innovation and adaptation to changing market conditions. Banks might invest in new technologies to improve efficiency um, and reducing risk or exploring new business models to divers diversify their revenue streams. Additionally, effective leadership could involve collaboration with other financial institutions and stakeholders to develop best practices and share resources for one thing, one common thing, greater resilience. So effective leadership, looking at my, my time here, hopefully that we can instincts that we want want to talk about um yeah, uh, overall active leadership in response to bank collapsing collapses um, can help to meet wider economy and promote greater stability greater innovation and raise the future so i you know, briefly covered my three cents on the recent SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank collapse um, um, at its beginning when it occurred earlier part of this month. Um, and I also include disclaimer, suggesting that I'm not <laughs> financial, um, I don't try to be. Um, I, I, I just want to, you know, share with you within the same, uh, you know, thought of train of thought right now that I did write my thoughts on my recent book called The Kaizen Currency of Sustainable Success. Um, if you guys are listening to this and you already have a copy of this book, uh, by the way, thank you for getting a copy. Uh, it is, paperback is available. So thank you so much for purchasing that. It is available on uh, Amazon, also available on Kindle. Um, I want you guys to scroll to page 214. Chapter 5, titled Kaizen, The Future of Business and Financial Markets. I, it, it, 
in, in that page, that chapter, I start proclaiming, um, let me open it real quick here, 214, chapter 5. Okay, so I start by proclaiming this. In the business world, change is constant. This means that business, businesses must be ready to adapt. Businesses must be ready to adapt in order to stay competitive, right? Within your business plan, hopefully you have exit plans within your business plans. You know, there's a list of them, right? Merging, acquire, sell it, and all of these things, right? Dump it, give it away, and donate. <laughs> One way to do this is to embrace Kaizen, to stay competitive through Kaizen approach. Encouraging these small incremental changes over time in order to achieve larger goals. It has the potential to, I use the word, revolutionize, revolutionize financial markets and business marketplaces by creating a more efficient and effective system for doing business. It's all on page 214. I then um, went on, if you look at it, chapter 5, dissecting these thoughts on smaller bites to digest. Of course, you know, it's too big chunks to digest. You can't enjoy it. You gotta have to learn how to take smaller bites. Okay. Revolutionize your finances with Kaizen, unlocking the power of continuous improvement. And there is a segment Kaizen and sustainable success. Uh, over here, this is Kaizen applied as applied to financial markets. I'm on page two one four right now. And Kaizen, the Kaizen currency of sustainable success, basically. And then, Two, one, four. Leveraging Kaizen for sustainable success in the financial markets. That's page 218. And I close this chapter by suggesting on page 220, 20 to 21, the key to navigating the uncertainty of the future business and financial markets. Um, so I, I pretty much take you guys from 214, pages 214 to all the way to 221 here. You know, I talk about the financial market, the business, the future of the business. And this is very interesting because I, you know, I, I want to include this in, the, in, in this book, uh, just my insights, right? Kaizen, the future of business and financial market, even though that I'm not, and I, I didn't go into detail. That's why the chapter is so small. It's just like a snapshot of the segments that I just mentioned to you guys. Um, I said, overall, the future of business is likely to be shaped by the principle of a sustainable success with the focus on achieving long-term success through continuous improvement and efficient use of resources. The financial market will also play a crucial role with the growing emphasis on sustainable investing and the use of technology to manage risk and navigate the complex financial landscape. I, I, I know it sounds very, um, like, not really detailed, just kind of vague. I don't want to use the word, word vague because, I mean, who, who knows the future, right? That's why we're all talking, discussing about this and hoping that we can find some solutions uh, as we, you know, uh, experiencing the journey together. So... I close the chapter by suggesting the key to navigating the uncertainty of the future business and financial markets. Basically, that's pages 220 and 221. I don't want to give out too much information, guys, and we don't have time on this podcast anyways. <laughs> it's almost like half, uh, more than, uh, we're already like 30 minutes into this podcast. Please check this book out, The Kaizen with Nikki Dare, uh, published last January, a couple months ago. Uh, 2023 available, like I said, both in Kindle and paperback and Amazon. Check it out on my website, my website, booksandcourses.nikidare.club. All right, again, booksandcourses.nikidare.club. All right, let's move on. You know, I, I want to include responding to natural disasters because, after all, this is environmentally, you know, uh, challenges that we're living in right now. Like, <laughs> So ever, every day, <laughs> if it's not in your geographic location, somebody else's, right? Natural disasters such as hurricanes, floods, wildfires can also, or earthquakes can also have significant impact on communities 
and your businesses. Effective leadership requires a proactive response to mitigate the effects of all of these events. This can include emergency planning, right? evacuation procedures, communication protocols. Um, I don't know how many of you listening here, uh, and then you go, oh, holy crap, you know, we don't have the emergency planning right now. That's okay because, you know, I, I, I've been doing this. I've been consulting with so many different companies and different sizes. Uh, different industries. The the very first thing, of course, I you know when they hire me to to look into their disaster planning would be like, do you guys have emergency planning, disaster planning, some kind of like for employee to protect them? They would say, here it is, is a piece of paper basically, and it's like uh, who to call <laughs> in case of emergency. That's not good enough. Anyway, uh, you know I I've seen it all, and I must say that. Not very many companies are prepared, and as FEMA stated before the um, before the uh, global disruption pandemic, uh, it stated that only Americans um, are not prepared for Mother Nature or any kind of disasters. Only a quarter of us prepared. So we need to convert that number, right? The three fourths of the number is just sitting complacent. And we can't do that. We can't have that. We gotta have to, you know, awareness is one thing, guys. Awareness and talking about this is one thing and watching people going through some, you know, mother nature, our disasters, natural disasters, one thing. And you guys are watching it on TV. It's like, oh, poor guys, right? But what happens if it happens to you? It's taking action. It's the other half of the battle of this. It's taking action. It's a huge half of the battle. Awareness and giving this out and information is like, look, we gotta have to stay stay prepared um, is one thing, right? But really taking action on your part is the other uh, critical part of it. So stay prepared. But leaders must also consider the emotional impact of these events on their teams and work to provide support and resources as needed. This is so important. We got to have to provide that support and resources as needed. Um, you know, not just getting the emergency items, you know, like, hey, you know, we're going to have to, and, and create this team, call it like task force or something, emergency preparedness, disaster preparedness team task force, uh, both natural and man-made, you know, active shooter or, you know, chemical toxic spill or things like that, right? Um, Got to have to have not just one person to be the leader, but also plan B, person, contingency plan. Uh, plan C, the third person in line, just in case if those two guys are on vacation. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, it happens, by the way. Um, so leaders might also consider the other side of that, emotional impact when these you know, events had occur on the teams. Uh, we got to have to provide support and resources as needed, the aftermath. Um, I want to give you guys some examples, you know, how leadership play crucial critical roles in overcoming these type of challenges. I'm going to take you back as far as Katrina, Hurricane Katrina and the California wildfires. The reason why I want to, I want to do those two and perhaps the pandemic um, is, is significant. The Hurricane Katrina, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, effective leadership was demonstrated by organizations that had developed emergency response plans in advance of the storm. For example, some hospitals had evacuation plans in, plans in place that included transporting patients to other facilities, right? shelters or hospitals in advance of the storm, or, or facilities that are protected. Additionally, some companies provided employees with access to emergency supplies and resources. You know, to all of these supplies and resources, such as food, water, temporary housing. I know we call them hotels or something, but temporary housing, enough for them to be protected from all of this you know, um, what do you call these uh, uh, disasters? California wildfires. All right. So in response to devastating wildfires that occurred in California in recent years where I live, right, this is almost seasonal. This is seasonal every year. We, we get this, right? Wildfires, a billion and billion dollars uh, devastating loss, by the way. Um, some companies have taken proactive measures to mitigate the impact of these events. For example, some businesses have invested in fire-resistant building materials, materials impl implemented emergency response plans. And some you know, companies provide employees with training on how to respond to wildfires and um, you know, mitigate, 
part of this mitigation lectures and workshops that I've conducted also, and they hired me to talk about this. And I, you know, I'm really a lot of opportunities for somebody like me and my team to go in there and, you know, really listening to their pains and, you know, their, their like concerns, like, you know, what to do, what to do. So after a while, we gather some case studies and then we, we can build from there, right? So these are important. You invest in your fire resistant building materials, implement those emergency response plans, and provide employees with your training, with the training on how to respond to any of disasters, specifically wildfires, you know, earthquakes, whatever geographic location that you have that you're uh, prone to for disasters, right? Uh, earthquakes in West Coast, maybe in East Coast would be snowstorms. Uh, Florida would be like, you know, hurricane, you know, and, and Southeast Asia, in the other side of the globe, Pacific Rim would be like tsunami, um, different, just different uh, sort of disasters. In some cases, companies have also donated, donated resources and funds to support relief efforts in affected communities. Now, I, I do have a, an idea, a nonprofit that does all that, which is uh, educating, mobilizing resources uh, for disaster risk reduction, because we, we know we cannot be 100% you know, prepared, but we, what we do know we can reduce those. Uh, we can reduce those uh, or risks or injuries or, you know, all of the, the damages and things like that by being proactive by providing, you know, the right equipment and emergency supplies like what I just shared. The third one that I want to share with you is the COVID nineteen pandemic. While not a natural disaster, uh, this pandemic has had significant impact on communities and businesses worldwide. I mentioned this all the time. Um, three years anniversary. At this month of the year 2023, right? Effective leadership has involved implementing emergency response plans to prioritize the health and safety of employees. Never thought about that until this COVID hit, unfortunately, because we're all humans. We're all concerned about, you know, hey, business is only concerned about numbers, you know, like majority of it, you know, it's true facts. Uh, COVID hits, like, okay, health, health is also important. So prioritizing the health and safety of employees, customers, and the community. For example, some companies have implemented remote work policies. We all have, you know, some kind of hybrid or work, 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 remote work, right, uh, environment landscape now. Providing employees with PPP, PPE, right, the equipment uh, protective, and resources to manage the stress, anxieties, and uncertainty of the pandemic, and communicate it regularly with stakeholders to keep them informed of all of these changing circumstances. So overall, responding to natural disasters require proactive planning, effective communication, and a willingness to adapt changing circumstances. Leaders must prioritize the health and safety of our teams and communities is so important, while also considering the emotional impact of these events and providing support resources as necessary. Um, Okay, we're gonna take a little break here. Just take a little. All right, so we're gonna provide some hypothetical examples of how leadership might play a role in responding to not have Christmas ball with us. But this is what we can, <laughs> I can ask my insights for three cents here flooding. Suppose a coastal city experiences severe flooding due to heavy rainfall and storm surge. Effective leadership would involve quickly mobilizing emergency response, right? This, 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 this response team is so important. The emergency response team is so important. You know, I call it disaster preparedness force or, you know, just like it says, response team. Coordinating with local and state authorities and communicating with residents to ensure their safety, right? Leaders may also work with engineers, and construction experts to develop long-term solutions to mitigate the impact of future flooding, such as building the leaves, leaves yeah, or implementing green infrastructure. Okay, I, I, I hope those of you who are listening and taking notes, um, you can always like, replay back these things and listening again. But as flooding, wildfires, imagine that a rural community is threatened by a large wildfire. Uh, we know that here in Southern California, the Santa Ana fire, <laughs> Santa Ana win, I should say, that is woof, giving and causing, uh, causing fires um, seasonal, 
you know, in summertime. Like, uh, I want to say, don't quote me in this, but it does. Sometimes it comes early. Uh, we, we've seen it in a couple of years, the last couple of years, but um, yeah, pretty much like right in the fall, you know, season, summer, at the end of summer. But wildfires, imagine that rural community is threatened by a large wildfire, which is spreading quickly to the high winds and dry conditions, right? Effective leadership would involve coordinating with the local fire department, local firefighting crews, deploying resources such as helicopters and bulldozers, and communicating regularly uh, with the residents, local residents to provide evacuation orders and updates on the fire's progress. Leaders might also work with ecologists, how do you spell that, the, the forestry experts, basically, to develop long-term strategies to reduce the risk of future wildfires, such as prescribed burns or re reforestation efforts. This is part of our, uh, I want to say, CSR, corporate social responsibility. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a role model. I mean, if you can integrate that into your corporate model business model you know it, it's it's very it's very um it's it's still winning you know it, it's like it's healthy your company is healthy because you are taking care of your responsibility in the community you know not just for the you know all, all of these things in your uh organization to generate revenue but also taking care of what surrounds you we've seen this already in the toxic chemical spill um, in Ohio, right? I mean, this is something, that's why I want to have this podcast to discuss this, by the way, you guys, to invite you leaders to think about this for the long, long term strategies, to develop long term strategy to reduce this risk uh, around in the community. Earthquakes, poison major earthquake strikes a densely populated area, causing widespread damage to buildings and infrastructures, right? Effective leadership would involve quickly mobilizing emergency response teams coordinating with local and state authorities and communicating with residents to provide guidance on sheltering in place, shelter in place, or is it evacuating to safe locations? You know, you have those options. Leaders might also work with engineers and architects to develop long-term solutions to mitigate the impact of future earthquakes, such as, it's so important, such as retrofitting buildings or implementing seismic resistant design standards. So important for real estate builders as well, if you're listening to this. Um, we've seen it in India. We've seen it in those earthquake in India and, uh, you know, Turkey. Uh, it, it, it's very unfortunate that those buildings are so old and retrofitted buildings or implementing, you know, have not yet implemented the seismic resistant design. Uh, code standards and everything who, who to blame you know <laughs> uh, there, there's no blaming here i mean we all have to work co collectively together so overall effective leadership in responding to natural disasters involve a combination of planning coordination and communication to ensure the safety of individuals and communities as well as long-term efforts to mitigate the impact of future events. All right, so those who know me, I have been advocating this subject through my nonprofit <laughs> called IDARE. Again, IDARE. Um, IDARE Cares is really the slogan for it, you know, uh, because there's <laughs> now there are many other companies called IDARE. It's like, oh, okay. But our IDARE is very 100% grassroots. Our mission, I allow me to share this with you, our mission is to live sustainable life with integrity that embraces safety and disaster preparedness planning with adaptability, resilience, and empowerment through emergency management education. That's our mission. Notice that the adaptability, there's resilience, and there's empowerment. And it spells the acronym for integrity, diversity, adaptation, resilience, empowerment. That's what IDARE stands for. IDARE is an acronym for integrity, diversity, adaptation, resilience, empowerment. IDARE is 100% grassroots. Our goal is to save life by educating and mobilizing resources, disaster risk reduction and sustainability. And the goal of our core programs are to raise awareness, to educate, to connect, and engage 
supporters in power leadership and power advocacy efforts. Um, learn more about this grassroots NPO on, on, on their website, guys, idearecares.org. Again, that website, idearecares.org. And yes, your small donation can make a huge impact. All right, moving on, a little bit PSA there. <laughs> Building resilience in a chaotic world is key to survival. Leaders must focus on building resilient organizations that can weather the storms of economic and environmental uncertainty. This requires focus on innovation, adaptability, and risk management. Leaders must also foster a culture of resilience where employees are empowered to take ownership of their work and encouraged to take, to take calculated risks. I think I mentioned that already. But um, as I was saying a while ago, too, this this is all about resilient resilience and leadership. You know, facing and overcoming some of the uh, challenges that we are facing right now today in the chaotic world. Leadership and building resilience are very essential during challenging times. In times of crisis, leaders must remain calm, calm, focused, and adaptable to effectively navigate our organizations through difficult circumstances. Also, our, our team, building resilience with, with a team or organization is crucial to ensuring the ability to withstand and recover. Now you're going through, and then you're going to have to recover quickly from all those unexpected challenges. We must know how to do that. Effective leadership during challenging times involves clear communication empathy, and a willingness to make difficult decisions. Leaders must communicate openly and transparently with our team members, ensuring that everybody is on the same page and everybody understands the situation. Empathy policy is our organization policy. Empathy is critical in acknowledging the emotional impact of challenging times on individuals, showing compassion and offering support. Building resilience involves creating a culture of adaptability. I love that word adaptability, as I said it earlier. You must be able to adapt in a world of just chaos and a changing rapid world that we live in today. It's not the strongest, it's not the smartest, it is the one who is most adaptable. So, building resilience involves creating this culture culture in, in our organization, in our business of adaptability, innovation, and risk taking. Those three things, three factors there. Leaders should encourage our teams to think outside the box. If not, create a box, come up with a different box, try new approaches, and take that calculated risk. Organizations should also diversify investments and create contingency plans, plan B, C, and maintain adequate cash reserves to prepare for unexpected challenges. How many organizations that is so lacking of emergency fund? Yeah, not just in your personal emergency family funds, but also your business. Your business have to have that contingency plan financially. So in conclusion, leadership, and building resilience during challenging times are crucial for the success and longevity of any organization. By focusing on effective leadership, clear communication, empathy, empathy is a policy here in our organization, and building a culture of resilience, leaders can guide their teams, our teams, through difficult circumstances, situations, minimizing the impact of challenges, and position our organizations for long-term success. This is what I call sustainable success, long-term sustainable and success. So the importance of resilience, you know, I'm going to go really quickly here and wrap it all up, right? Strong future amidst economic and environmental uncertainty. This is what we're talking about this podcast, guys. Thank you so much for just hanging out with me here for the last hour, almost last hour. Uh, we're talking about the importance of resilience in navigating economic uncertainty. But in today's ever-changing world, resilience is key to survival. 
as leaders must focus on building resilient organizations that can weather any storms of economic and environmental uncertainty. And this requires a focus on innovation, adaptability, and risk management. Leaders must also foster a culture of resilience where our employees are empowered, feeling empowered to take ownership of their work and encouraged to take calculated risk collectively together. Navigating economic uncertainty. Economic uncertainty can be a major challenge for leaders. If we don't know what we don't know, we can perhaps learn from the experiences that we've had. In times of economic downturn, it is essential to have a contingency plan in place to address any potential disruptions and to maintain that business continuity. It is my passion for the longest time since back in the 80s as a change management specialist. You know, when I consult in any organization that's going through some, you know, restructuring, we call it, right? BPR, Business Process for Engineering, back then. BPR, change management, TQI, TQM. This maintaining the business continuity is so important right now. Ever, ever, we we've experienced this crisis throughout our life. And I want you guys to start thinking if you haven't done yet. Includes this having adequate cash reserves. You know how many years? It's up to you, depending on the size of your business, depending on the on the uh, you know industry that you're in your business it's all different it's not a cookie cutter it's a customized thing right you gotta know how much what percentage of your cash reserve that you require for your business to continue your supply chain to continue running one year two years three years and then also having an adequate diversifying investment and ensuring that others are informed and engaged. Next one is managing environmental risk. We never thought about this before. Back in the 80s and 90s, we never really think about this. We never thought about this after so many natural series of natural disasters, right? Hit our planet Earth. We now have more resources to talk about, discuss, and then say, okay, we need to be aware of these things. Environmental risk is another challenge that leaders must address. Natural disasters, climate change, and other environmental factors can have a significant impact on organizations and communities. Effective leadership requires a proactive response to mitigate the effects of these events. This can include your emergency planning, this can include your evacuation procedures, and, and then building that team, the response, emergency response team, the disaster Prepare them as task force, I'll call it, and your communication protocols. Very critical. I, I go in, I ask for safety communication protocol or disaster preparedness emergency planning. It's like, what is that? And they go, this is your safety hazard piece of paper. And then it's uh, just like a three uh, emergency three call. You know, you need to, then it ended up to the security guard. At the post, I no, that's not it. <laughs> depending on the size of your business, depending on your, you know, nature of your business, the industry you're in, you have to have this. You have to have your business planning plan. You have to have your disaster planning as well. Your emergency planning procedures, communication uh, protocols. All right. So the next part is fostering a resilient culture. I love this. Building a resilient organization start with fostering a resilient culture. Leaders must encourage employees to take ownership of their work and encourage them, empower them to take calculated risks together. And this requires a focus on continuous learning and development and training, as well as open communication for trust, transparency, and collaboration. So in conclusion, guys, uh, building a resilient organization is very essential in today's world of economic and environmental uncertainties. We leaders must focus on 
innovation, adaptability, and risk management while fostering a resilient culture. So in conclusion, I must say, effective leadership in chaotic world requires a focus on the impact of bank collapses, natural disasters, all those environmental you know, uh, challenges that we are, we're facing right now, as well as the building resilience. Leaders must be proactive in the response to these events and providing, continue to provide, maintaining to providing support and resources to our teams and communities. And by focusing on resilience, leaders can ensure the long success, sustainability, I'll call it, of our organizations and contribute to a brighter future for all. That's all for me today. I think I, I have, you know, reached our maximum one hour. Until next time, guys. But hey, don't forget to check out my latest uh, books that published recently. <laughs> I'm still working on a, uh, quite a few right now on a series of this Kaizen. I already uh, finalized the manuscript on the second part. I just need to publish it. I don't know what I'm waiting for. But recently, I published this book called The Kaizen Currency of Sustainable Success. I'm looking at it right now here. It's 315 pages long. But no worries. They're all kind of like, you know, uh, very, 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 very easy to read and very creatively designed for you to uh, digest. And I have, you know, little surprises in that book that you guys can uh, resonate with. Uh, but it's a book called Kaizen Currency, A Sustainable Success, An Ecosystemic Approach to Life. It is an interactive business book, you guys, that I put together. It encourages um, a business-oriented Kaizen mindset. Yes, I call it Kaizen mindset. I dare I call it Kaizen mindset. Um, in the pursuit of this long-term sustainability and long-term success that we just covered here in the podcast, uh, this book is a guide for your personal and professional growth that draws from, um, of course, this Japanese concept of the word Kaizen, means change good, which emphasizes continuous improvement and small incremental steps to a larger, you know, goal, larger, you know, uh, improvement, basically. This book is ideal for you, CEOs, business owners, entrepreneurs, Employees also and leaders who seek success, who is looking for success and sustainable business. So this book is very ideal for you. Uh, the book provides an overview of this Kaizen philosophy, right, and practical advices and strategies for applying it to various areas of life, and, and an in-depth exploration of the ecosystemic approach to success. Yes, I created that word too, ecosystemic approach to life, basically. And I do have a lot of case studies in there, a lot of research, really in-depth exploration in there. Uh, that's very, very unique, interesting, and exciting. And you guys are not going to get bored. Trust me, you won't be bored reading this book, even though it says like more than 300 pages, sneaky. So with this blend of Eastern Western philosophies, the book offers a very inspiring actionable plan for achieving long-term success. Yes, uh, it is an invite to take action. Of course, any anybody who's taken my workshop, training, anything, I, I don't let you get out that easy after taking this, uh, after the sessions of my, my training and lectures and all this, you guys, and then really take action. There are a lot of better ways in this book, from this book. Uh, worth checking it out? Uh, please do grab one if you haven't got one yet, either from my website, books and courses, nikidare.club. Uh, just go to Amazon, Google my name, Nikki Dare on Amazon. The book is there already. Grab a copy after you finish. I would truly, truly, truly appreciate you guys to, uh, I've never done this, you know, <laughs> ask my readers like, hey, leave me a mess, uh, leave me a feedback, leave me a review on Amazon. That would help. That, that's a win 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 by the way that would uh help other potential readers that's looking for you know for this book and it's like ah oh, should i get this and then your honest feedback would really truly help for other readers to uh, you know to uh to support this so um after all we're all in this together support each other right um and then it's a win 
a, another win for me because I mean that's that would be a priceless gift for me from you guys. Thank you so much, by the way. The next book that I recently published called Situational Leadership. I think this is in my lot last podcast i had a slight incorrect blurb incorrectly <laughs> nikki switch to decaf it should be book title situational leadership i think i say sustainability instead <laughs> because it is and the correct title technically it is situational leadership incorporating situational awareness for effective decision making and adaptability in dynamic environments wow that's a mouthful nikki um I am working on the paperback version, but I, uh, it, it is in Kindle already on Amazon. So in a little bit different on paperback, I just insert a little bit more quotes and a little bit more uh, graphics, images, illustrations, um, but the content itself should be impactful. It's uh, similar to the one in, 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 in Kindle. So guys, grab a copy. Uh, what is this book about? Great question. Uh, situational leadership incorpor incorporating situational awareness for effective decision making and adaptability in dynamic environment. Uh, this book emphasizing the importance of situational awareness in effective leadership. Basically, that's it. The book explores how leaders such as yourself can adapt to dynamic environments by making decisions based on situational awareness rather than relying on fixed leadership styles. So when I wrote this book, I tried to emphasize the focus on the leaders must be adaptable and able to make informed uh, decision based on the current situation rather than by applying one size fits all approach like cookie cutter. Uh, the book provides practical strategies and techniques for developing situational awareness and applying it in the leadership situation. So overall, uh, this book, Situational Leadership, Incorporating Situational Awareness for Effective Decision Making and Adaptability in Dynamic Environments, I'm looking at it right now, is really a valuable resource for leaders looking to enhance their leadership skills in today's ever-changing business landscape. Go grab one. It's worth checking it out. Available on Amazon, like I said, both in Kindle um, and Kaizen also uh, in paperback. But this situational leadership is not available on um, paperback yet. I am going to formulating it into paperback soon, hopefully very soon. <laughs> Don't forget, please, please, please leave me a feedback to those book reviews are the best gifts for me. So I hope you do enjoy reading them, these books, as much as I enjoy writing them. I hope you do enjoy reading these books as much as I enjoyed writing these books. All right, guys, we're coming to the end of the episode. It's been really a great, 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 uh, enjoyable time here with you guys spent here on a Wednesday. Uh, great background music as well. Rainy day here in Southern California. Jazz Cafe, Slow Jazz. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all for me today. That's today's episode of Leadership 365. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you do found today's discussion informative and helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast for more insights and strategies on leadership. Do come back and check out podcast.nikidare.club. Let me, let me see if that is correct. Podcast. Uh, Nikki Dare.club. Let me check it out real quick here on my phone. Okay, Nikki Dare.com. So it's podcast. Sorry, guys. It is oh, it's singular, not plural, because somebody asked me that recently. Okay, so podcast, podcast, just one singular. Dot Nikki Dare. Dot Com. Okay, if you can't find it, make it there. Dot club. <laughs> I'm looking at. I don't have. I don't. I don't have my. <laughs> I don't have my. Uh, my phone. So I mean, uh, my glasses. Looking at my phone right now. So I think uh, you guys can can find it there. All right, that's all for me, guys. Thank you so much for listening, tuning in. Buenos dias, hola, buenas tardes, cómo está el vu, 
uh, selamat siang, selamat sore, selamat malam. I think you guys probably selamat malam in the other side of the world, the other side of the Western Hemisphere. Um, I just want to just, you know, wrap it all up. And I do have a couple things to say before I go. I do hope that you find today's discussion informative and helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. And I want to hear from you. What is one thing that you have learned recently that has had a positive impact on your life or even on, you know, just this podcast, your feedback? You can hit me up on any of my social media platforms at Nikki Dare, uh, pretty much on Nikki Dare, and I C K Y D A R E. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're listening here and watching my YouTube channel. Um, you know, subscribe to YouTube channel Nikki Dare at Nikki Dare. If you do listen to In Heart, I'm sorry, iHeart Radio or Spotify, don't forget to subscribe to my channel there too. Leave me some comments or feedback. Your feedback is truly, truly a gift for me, you guys. Thank you for listening to this episode today of Leadership 365, creating your year of 365 days. Um, I want to share with you last thought here. The, uh, earlier in times of chaos, those who are looking to adapt, to innovate, to inspire a team, to navigate through the storm, and emerge stronger than ever before. And here's my very, very last thought, I promise. The ability to adapt and thrive in today's world is no longer just a game for the big companies. In fact, it's often the small companies and the nonprofit organizations that have the agility and flexibility to survive and adapt and thrive amidst the chaos. All right, guys, stay vigilant, stay safe. Until next time, sampai jumpa. God bless. This is Nikki Dear. Don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. Thank you so very much, guys. Until next time, Sammy Jumpa. Stay safe. God bless. You have been listening to Nikki Dares Radio, a podcast of sustainability with your host, Ms. Nikki Dare. Nikki Dare's life has been spent passionately in helping others going through transformation, both personal and professional. To learn more, please visit Ms. Dare's websites, education.nikkidare.com. Workshops on safety preparedness, situational awareness are available. Also available, the Transformational Coaching Series. For corporate and private group pricing, please contact us. Please visit her website, NikkiDare.com. All of her broadcasts are available for free download on iTunes podcast, Nikki Dare. For more details on opportunities for sponsorships and speaking engagements, please email us at education at Nikki dare.com join her next time living in purpose and passion our mission is to live a sustainable life with your host nikki dare